Salazar, a legendary fighter for the Nightmare faction. If you've come to this video because you're fairly new to the game and you've just pulled him, well congratulations because he is absolutely incredible, arguably one of the best heroes in the entire game and definitely one of the best fighters in the entire game. Salazar is a single target nuker, that is his specialism though he is capable of so much more as well. In this video we're going to talk about his basic hero details and stat line, we'll talk about his skills, we'll go into his awakenings, we'll talk about gearing him, artifacts, we'll go into where to use him, how to use him, and then we'll finish off with some general tips and tricks, although many of them will be covered throughout the video. So to start things off, we'll talk a bit about his faction and his hero details. So first up, he is a nightmare hero. This means that he gains an attack speed bonus based on the number of nightmare heroes deployed. So they have to be placed to get this bonus, but they can be removed and the bonus will be retained overall. One of the best things about being in the Nightmare faction is that it is incredibly accessible early game due to getting Wrath as a login reward. What this means is that Salazar is very easy to use very early in the game because he has a very consistent Lord, not only giving him stat benefits but giving him attack speed as well which is very beneficial for his kit. So next up let's go over his hero details and then move on to his skills. So you can see at max level he has a pretty high HP pool at 24 and a half thousand health. It is not the highest, it is not super high, but it is definitely better than average for a fighter. His attack on the other hand is 6.5 thousand base attack at max level, max promotion. This is really good. At 6.5 thousand base attack, Salazar has the second highest attack in the entire game, losing only to Magmus who has freakishly high base stats. However, Salazar does not just have high base stats, his toolkit is incredibly powerful and surprisingly diverse. The main benefit behind having this high attack is that attack bonus gear will scale very very well for him. You can see his attack range is just a single tile, if it was more it would be ridiculous. His base attack interval is 2.6 which is not too bad, it's kind of standard. His cost of 17, kind of on the lower end but only just, it's kind of average to maybe slightly lower as you do get quite a few fighters at 18 to 19 cost. Block of 2 is standard for all fighters so pretty much everything is normal. Rage Regen at 13 is about average as well. So, so to summarize his stats, fairly high base HP, very high base attack and then everything else is pretty standard. We'll move on to the rest of his toolkit. He is a normal damage fighter. Pretty much all fighters are normal damage, meaning they don't gain bonus damage to light or heavy armor. A couple are magic or hybrid damage types. He has no talent, unfortunately, as one of the older heroes in the game, many of them do not. And with that, let's take a look at his actual individual skills. So physical attack, this is basic attack. Attacks one enemy unit with a 15% chance to employ bleed on the target, increasing by half a percent per skill up, which will take him to 17% chance to apply bleed. Bleed lasts for four seconds, and each second it deals 1% of the target's max HP per second, and it also increases the physical damage that they take by 10%. It does not stack. So, so long as you can maintain a permanent bleed effect on the enemy, they will be taking 1% health damage per second. More importantly, they are taking more damage from physical damage. So, incredibly good for Salazar, of course. And you will notice throughout this video that bleed is kind of the most important aspect of Salazar in many, many ways. So, next up we have his ultimate slashing blitz. It is a manually activated ultimate, which means you have to choose when to activate it. Costs at base 1100 rage to activate. It starts with 300 rage by default when you place him and it lasts for two seconds, so there is a duration for his ultimate. It launches a blitz of six strikes, randomly on all targets in range, and each strike dealing 220% damage, and the last dealing 300% damage. He becomes immune to all damage when the skill is in effect, and the skill is guaranteed to be critical to bleeding targets. It goes down to 900 rage at max skill, which is kind of a mid-level, slightly high end on his rage cap, but it does come up rapidly as he does attack very fast typically. And the damage of his normal attacks and the final attack increase by 80% each. So it becomes 300% damage for 5 strikes and the final 6th strike deals 380% damage. That totals to 880% damage in a single ultimate burst over 2 seconds. That is kind of ridiculous damage, it is super high and with his base attack it just becomes a devastating nuke. Of course it's worth keeping in mind that the bleed guarantees crits, so so long as the enemy has the bleed debuff on them he will be critting every single one of these strikes, which is really beneficial especially if you're early game. There are a few interesting things that can kind of feed into this, especially regarding his awakenings, but we'll get into that later. So next up we have his first passive, Boiling Blood. Launches basic attacks on one enemy, dealing damage equal to 35% attack two times and the skill ups increase this by 5% four times which would take him up to 55% damage twice. 
the second attack will definitely be critical if targeting a bleeding unit. So that may seem slightly confusing as we just went over his basic attack and this is a basic attack. Well, if you look at his basic attack, it doesn't tell you the damage modifier. It just tells you it has a chance to imply bleed. Boiling blood basically means that when he attacks, he attacks twice. Every single one of his basic attacks hits twice and only his first attack has a chance to bleed but his second attack is guaranteed to crit if the enemy is bleeding. So without skill ups, he's only doing 70% of his damage per basic attack. At max skill ups, he's doing 110% damage. So next we have his final passive blessings of dragon blood. Recover 3% of max HP for every seven critical hits landed. At max skill, this goes to 8% of his max HP for every five crits landed. Bearing in mind, you can crit on both swings with a base interval of 2.6 seconds. If you're critting every single attack, that's two crits every 2.6 seconds. So it'll take you around six seconds averaged to proc this. So he's regenerating 8% max HP every around six, seven seconds, assuming he's critting all the time. It's not the most incredible thing, but it is actually quite nice and you can use him as a self-sustained fighter in, in quite a few cases. So that kind of covers his base kit. There isn't a massive amount of detail. The general gist of it is he hits twice with his basic attacks. He applies bleed with a decent 17% chance at max skill up. His ult is guaranteed to crit on bleeding targets and does a massive nuke for six strikes that can be the same target or can be divided amongst many targets and can ladder bounce across enemies that are further away, which is worth keeping in mind. So with that, let's take a look at his awakenings. The first awakening enhances both his passive and his basic attack and it adds a 10% chance to bleed. So this gives him a lot more options to proc his bleed and I believe this means that both of his attacks will have a chance to proc bleed whereas by default only his basic attack does I believe. I could be wrong so correct me if I am. This is a pretty good awakening. This gives him more chance to apply bleed which is really important for how Salazar works not just in guaranteeing criticals but also for a very important artifact which we'll get into a bit later basically just guarantees some more damage so bleed is very important on salazar which is really key to how you build him so the first awakening is really good 10 percent extra chance to bleed which increases damage output on the bleed debuff itself which in uh, increases the uptime of the physical damage debuff and it increases the crits he will land as well as providing benefits to your other heroes if they are using that artifact. So first awakening is very good. Second awakening is 5% attack. He has a load of base attack so this is obviously really nice. So this will obviously be beneficial but the second and fourth awakenings tend to be quite weak compared to the first, third and fifth. So the third awakening increases his bleed duration by two seconds for all of the bleeds he applies. This is increasing the duration from four seconds to six seconds in which case you have to not only think that it increases the potential damage output from the, the bleeding debuff the uptime of this debuff and the window for him to deal damage but it also makes it more likely that he will have a higher uptime on bleed overall so kind of everything scales in it because he's more likely to reapply it in that same window it just gives you a much more consistent uptime mine is currently at awakened free and i noticed a massive leap in dps upon all of these individual awakenings especially the first and the third i think i gained nearly three million guild boss damage and nightmare for alone from the third awakening so it's definitely very powerful increased uptime on bleed is really nice this basically allows him to do more damage against armored targets so this is a nice one i don't have it so i don't know exactly how impactful it is but i think it should be quite good and finally we have the fifth awakening Boiling Blood's first attack is guaranteed to be critical on bleed targets. So there's some interesting nuance to this and there are many different opinions on this. I don't hold the main opinion so you'll get my take in a second. Basically what this means at 5th Awakening, Salazar technically does not need to have any crit. You can build him with 0% crit chance because so long as the enemy is bleeding, his ultimate will crit and both of his auto attacks will crit as well. So you do see some end game accounts and end game players building him with 0% crit chance and building him just maxed on attack and crit damage, high rage regen, high attack speed, etc. And just going all the way in on that. And it does work in some scenarios, it's not completely wrong. I personally don't think it is the right way to build a Salazar. I do understand the logic. My reason for not going with this build, one, I don't have an A5 Salazar, but even if I did, I wouldn't build him this way. The reason for it is Salazar's slashing blitz is probably around 50% of his toolkit and the bleed application is probably the other 50%. His auto attack doesn't really do a massive amount. It's not bad by any means, but you use him for his ultimate and for his bleed application. His ultimate will crit on bleeding targets with A5, However, his blitz can target enemies that are two tiles away. It can bounce to targets that are further away. It can bounce between many targets. Salazar is a single target enemy that can only apply bleed on one target at a time, and he's not going to change targets. 
This means if you're using him in single target arena, if you're using him in persistent damage arena, if you're using him in gear raid 2 and you want to attack one of the rolling boulders before it reaches you, if you're using him to leap over a wall to attack an enemy that is not actually in his reach, they won't be bleeding unless you're using other heroes of which there are very very few bleed heroes. So I don't like the idea of negating his crit chance because it makes him useless against enemies that are not bleeding and sure that works perfectly fine if you only use him in guild boss as the guild boss should be bleeding almost permanently if you are a5 but otherwise if you're using him elsewhere which i think you really should be he is an absolute monster it would be a massive shame to limit the ability of his ultimate solely because you wanted to cheap out on some crit rate i think that takes us quite neatly into the gear discussion of how to gear salazar so we'll go and take a look at mine and i'll go over why i've geared him in a certain way and my thoughts upon what is the priority for gearing so this is my salazar probably one of my best geared heroes on my account he's definitely one of my favorite heroes so he gets all the good stuff i've geared him with not much hp focus so he's fairly squishy a huge focus on bonus attack i've not really concerned myself with defense i've made sure to give him a decent amount of attack speed 100% crit rate, a bunch of crit damage. I've not gone on healing effect though. It would scale on his self heal. I don't really care too much. And a minor amount of rage regen. I would like this to be higher. So these stats are probably unattainable for a, for a large amount of players. I would say his priority is attack first. And after that, you want to focus on crit rate up to 90 to 100%. And then after that, you focus on balancing your crit damage with your bonus attack. So the balance of my Salazar's attack and crit damage works out as 243% bonus attack. And to work out how much bonus crit damage you have, you just take the 50. So it works out as 207.5% crit damage bonus. So I'm a little bit heavy on his attack bonus. It's still reasonably balanced. You kind of want them to be as equal as you can because obviously they benefit one another. The attack speed is something I'm quite happy with because you do want to get quite a lot of attack speed on Salazar. Salazar benefits a lot from attack speed for two really key reasons. One of them should be fairly obvious, which is increasing the uptime of his bleed. That is a massive priority for Salazar, as we'll get into shortly with his artifact. Since I've mentioned the artifact a couple of times, I'll quickly show you. It is Scarlet Hunt. Increases damage to targets that are bleeding. At max, it's 30%. Without any dupes, it is only 20%. Either way, 20 to 30% damage increase while targets are bleeding is actually quite a substantial amount of damage increase. So you want to have bleed applied as much as possible, mainly for Guild Boss, where the boss is going to be alive a long time and you need to have a very consistent high DPS output. That is where the Scarlet Hunt shines, and that is really where you want Salazar to be bleeding because he is really key to a lot of guild boss teams. So attack speed increases the uptime and it increases the chance of applying and maintaining a bleed debuff on the guild boss, as well as anywhere else that you're using him. His ultimate provides massive burst damage, so you want to use it as much as possible. So the second benefit of attack speed is that it actually grants you more rage regen. Remember, every time you deal or take damage, you generate rage as well as passively. The passive number is this 13, and the amount you gain upon being hit or hitting an enemy is affected by the rage regen percentage here. So the higher this bonus is, the more rage regen you will gain from taking or dealing damage, which is why it kind of benefits from his attack speed because you're attacking more often. So that should cover his stats as a whole. He is very stat heavy. I think it's okay to not prioritize rage regen until you're later on because it is quite tricky to balance all of his stats out. When you're going towards the end game more and you're in myth gear and you're trying to really optimize your Salazar, you want to be aiming for around 12k on your bonus attack, 95 to 100% on crit rate, and ideally at least 100% on crit damage here. That kind of balances it out fairly well. You'll also want to aim for 120 attack speed or more, and ideally do try to pick up some rage regen if possible, but if not, it's not the end of the world. That makes him better for getting his ult up sooner, which can help you win in arena, can increase your guild boss damage output. But in a lot of cases when you're progressing in campaign, using him in Void Rift, etc. Having him get it up half a second sooner or even a second sooner won't make that much difference. So definitely prioritize attack as it is super high for him. He scales incredibly well on attack. Prioritize getting his crit rate high and having a good balance of crit damage and then do try to pick up some attack speed if you can. It is quite heavy on stats, so it can be quite tricky, but he is a DPS after all and one of the best in the game. So you do really want to prioritize his damage output. I haven't talked about his HP yet. If you find yourself using him to block waves a lot, then definitely throw some more HP percent subs in if you can. So we'll have a look at some of the gear I've got on him, which isn't super relevant. I'll just show you what I have if you're curious. You'll see a fairly consistent trend of a focus on the crit rate, crit damage and attack speed subs. And then only one of them picked up Rage Regen on the fourth. But these are fairly decent. The rolls are not crazy high, no yellows. But I'm still fairly happy with them. And you'll see these same stat pairings across all of the gear. I'm just trying to get hold of as much as I can. So that pretty much covers it for his stats. Next, we'll talk about what gear to put him in. We'll start on the accessory side first. There are many good options for gearing. And as, as I'll say in every single video and in all of my advice, do focus on the stats first. 
if my Salazar was in broken gear and he still had these stats, I would still consider this to be a very powerful Salazar. If he was in really poor stats but he had this gear set, I would consider it to be a really rubbish Salazar. So you definitely want to prioritize your stats first because that is where everything is driven from. So talking about gear in terms of what are the best sets for him, I'm going to go over all of the DPS sets and kind of give you my thoughts. Infernal Roar, although it seems like it has potential as it does increase your base attack damage, Salazar's main damage comes from his ultimate which is a nuke, so I don't rate Infernal Roar for Salazar. Soulbound, Arcana is the one I'm using right now, and this increases your damage by 10% permanently every time you cast your ultimate, and it stacks up to 5 times. Salazar will get his ultimate up quite often, so I find that he actually can churn through his ultimates rapidly, and in Guild Boss he's at 5 stacks very quickly. And for me, I think the Soulbound Arcana is the best late game set for Salazar. Ancient Wrath is a decent set to give to a Salazar, as it increases his crit damage by 30%, and then whenever he crits, he gains an extra 1%, stacking up to 30 times, for a total of 60% maximum from this set. That's a really good bonus for Salazar, as he'll be critting like nobody's business, and he will rack up 30 stacks in absolutely no time whatsoever, because he is double attacking, and his ultimate hits 6 times. So he'll max out this in no time. I think this is also one of the best sets to use on Salazar. It makes gearing him a little bit easier as you can just take, you could take free attack percent gear if you can afford it on the crit rate. You wouldn't need to take a crit damage one and maybe you'll find yourself with more options on gearing and potentially better stats overall. Insight grants crit rate and some true damage on hit. It's not an awful set, but it doesn't really grant a great deal to a damage dealer like Salazar. The true damage just isn't really high enough. The wisdom set is a pretty decent set. It gives you 35% damage for 10 seconds after ultimating, which is not bad on Salazar. It's actually fairly decent, but it's kind of a short window. You want more uptime on the benefits. So that's why I prefer Soulbound Arcana if you can farm it. This can be upgraded into Soulbound Arcana very later on where you can farm those materials, which are quite hard to get. But I think it's a reasonable set to use. I think it's just slightly better on other heroes. The Doom set is better. This is actually a pretty good set for Salazar. Single target damage of 18%. Everything he does is single target. So this is just a flat 18% damage increase for Salazar. So I think the Doom is quite good to use. Night Terror is the one I use throughout most of my gameplay with Salazar as it increases his damage by 25% for 3 seconds after making critical hits. At base, his attack interval is 2.6. He's not a slow hero. So he'll maintain 100% uptime so long as you have 100% crit rate. And even at 90% crit rate, because he attacks twice, almost certainly he's going to maintain this buff anyway. And his ultimate is spread over 6 attacks. As soon as the first one crits, he'll have it on the remaining 5 attacks. So I think Night Terror is also one of the best sets to have on a Salazar. This is the one I use for a very long time. Glacier is not a bad set to use on Salazar as it does give him bonus attack. It scales in his HP and his HP is pretty good. Fracture is a high damage set, 45% crit damage while above 70% HP. Personally, I really don't like this set all that much. The reason I'm not super keen on it is because you really need to make sure that that hero is supported by a healer at all times unless they have incredible self-sustain. If you've placed him away from healers to kind of hold a lane or to self-sustain in a crucial part of a mission, I think it's kind of a shame to lose out on the set bonus. I would recommend Soulbound Arcana first if you can get it. Ancient Wrath is probably just as good. I would say probably a bit worse in my opinion, but I think both of them are very good options. This is of course only if you can farm stage 19 to 21 of gear raids two or three so quite hard to get hold of and then when you go down to the prior stages i would recommend the doom set and night terror these are my two favorite picks from the next tier down so moving over to his weapon and chest armor side the warlord is going to of course be the best set to give him it grants attack percent and it grants attack speed it's only attack speed bonus over the calamity set but hey, it's 33 attack speed if you can afford to put him in good gear. As you can see, my Calamity has better stats, so I've stayed with the older set until I'm able to move over without sacrificing stats, because once again, stats beat gear sets. After the Warlord set, your best bets are going to be Calamity, Whirlwind, and Annihilating Might. Definitely focus on these three sets, or Warlord if you can make it. My suggestion would be pick the set that you have the best gear on, and if you still have a choice after that, then balance out your crit damage and your attack percent as a must. If you find that your attack is super, super low, like under 120 in your end game, then perhaps consider going for the Whirlwind set just to help boost your attack speed, as 75 attack speed is actually quite nice. So, that covers gearing Salazar. Just to quickly show you what a 250 attack speed gets you, on my Salazar that brings his interval down from 2.6 to 1.7, which is really nice with a 6 second bleed time, he attacks twice every 1.7 seconds with a decent chance to apply bleed. My Salazar has almost 100% uptime on bleed on Guild Boss. So that brings us to the artifacts, which I did briefly talk about earlier. There isn't really a choice for Salazar, it is Scarlet Hunt or nothing else. 
You want Scarlet Hunt because he's a playing bleed. It's 30% damage increase. It's the only real choice for Salazar. If you don't have a Scarlet Hunt and you're wondering where else to put on him, maybe Selene Shadow Strike if you have this and you don't have a Scarlet Hunt. You could also go for maybe a Watchguard's Ambition if you're early a game because it gives you a chance to make another attack which increases your chance to apply bleed. But besides that, there aren't really many really good options. You're really going to want the Scarlet Hunt. That's kind of the be all end all of Salazar. So talking about where you can use Salazar, the answer is basically everywhere where the enemies are not flying. One of the best places to use him is of course Guild Boss. You can see mine doing 60 million damage in Nightmare 4. He is beating out all of the competition and he is approaching my Zillatu, which is probably says more about my Zillatu than my Salazar. But still, it's impressive that Salazar is able to punch this high. And not only is he providing a massive amount of damage, but my Zilla 2 is also geared in a Scarlet Hunt piece. So she's gaining a load of damage from having Salazar in the team. And my Arrogance also has a Scarlet Hunt. So he boosts all of the fighters in your team. So Salazar is not only providing a massive amount of damage, he's also applying a really good debuff in the form of his bleed attack, not only activating their artifact, but also increasing the physical damage taken by enemies. So Salazar is super, super good in Guild Boss, probably top two in the entire game I would say with of course Zilla 2 being the queen of guild boss I would then say Salazar is the king of guild boss I think he is really that good but more often than not they are fighters still because arrogance can perform super well but you have to remember that Salazar is providing the bleed which activates their scarlet hunt and provides the increased damage received so as for raids he is good in promotion raid in the fighter one of course the melee attack because he can jump with his ultimate and hit other lanes to help defend other lanes he's okay in resource raid he has a really quick time to kill his ultimate will kill six of these enemies quickly it's not really his area though, but yeah, he's fine. I mean, he blocks two and he kills rapidly, so you can definitely use him, but it's not really his thing. In Gear Raid 1, you could kind of use him in a few cases. He's not going to be doing the most damage or even a mid-level of damage, but you can put him behind the wall to get some hits in and have his ultimate effect. If you're struggling to kill the boss, then you can use Salazar specifically for that. And you can often find that if it's just the boss at the end and you're kind of about to lose, Salazar hitting the boss and then ulting will actually just eviscerate the boss. So I've had a few scenarios, especially when I was progressing, where using a Salazar actually helped in Gear Raid 1. But generally, this is not his area. You may find some ways to benefit, but it is not his thing. Gear Raid 2, he can be used here to a pretty decent amount of effect, actually. And I've used him in some very important key late game runs but it is entirely just for his burst window of DPS. It is not for his tankiness or anything else. You don't want him getting hit by rolling boulders because it will just total him and he'll die instantly. So yeah, he's not the best at Gear Raid 2, but there are some scenarios where he's really nice to have and he's good for killing the boss at the end. And in Gear Raid 3, he is of course completely useless. So the Gear Raids are not actually that great for Salazar. You can find some use for him in Gear Raid 1 barely and in Gear Raid 2, he can help out quite a bit but kind of in precise locations. He's not a general hero for this run. He'll just get killed if you put him in harm's way. In Artifact Material Raid, I mean, it's basically his namesake. You see the boss there. This is one of the best areas for Salazar. This is not the fastest strategy by any means, but this is a strategy I'm using at the moment since it was changed recently. I use him with a Dolores, with an ult boost. He can quickly damage the boss and bring the boss down. And it's a fairly quick run. I used him while I was progressing through the Artifact Material Raid as well. And I would say he's arguably one of the best heroes in the game for Artifact Material Raid. Just because of his burst damage being so high, the sooner you kill the boss, the better things go. And he's good at defending the sidelines as he can self-sustain as well. Next up, we have the Faction Trials. I've used him in the basic trial to some success because his ult is just so effective. It's really his ult just makes him almost usable anywhere just because of how much damage it does. In the Nightmare Trial, it's kind of easy and Salazar makes it a complete cakewalk. The campaign, I found him incredibly useful for my progression. Having a hero that had the versatility to annihilate with his ultimate to defend and block lanes to self-sustain it's just all in all a very useful toolkit to have also having decent base hp he was just super useful for me and helped me progress through many many stages his ultimate just having clutch kills was just ridiculously useful as well and sometimes you can jump to other lanes as it does have a two tile reach you may have also seen my chapter 9 runs the new campaign chapter that was added not too long ago salazar was incredibly useful especially on the final boss really really good at campaign so next up we have arena and pvp in general in anti-air obviously he is useless here in aoe you can actually find some use for him and you can even see he's at 16 at the moment in the usage for aoe dps he is not an aoe hero but he kills so fast with his ultimate up you can kind of make it work there are some teams you see people using where it's wrath salazar arrogance and sometimes abomination and they just kind of group them all together and just mash the enemies down while they're blocked so he can be used in group arena it's not great it will not really compete against a hatzer a morrigan a vierna these are the the queens of the aoe dps arena but Salazar can kind of work in a Nightmare team, and Nightmare teams are very accessible. 
So it brings us to single target DPS and as you can see Salazar is the absolute overlord king of single target DPS. You'll most often see him paired with these two heroes Dolores and Elowin. That's because Dolores boosts his attack by a massive amount which makes him just do crazy damage and Elowin gives him rage regen which allows him to ult more frequently. So this trio is kind of the dream team they just do a massive amount of damage. Salazar can just chew through waves and Salazar often dictates the pace at how fast the waves spawn. That is the most powerful benefit of using heroes such as Salazar in single target or if it comes to AoE or anti-air, Hatsa. They both have massively fast eliminating ultimates and they can make sure that they control the pace of the wave. But a very quick tip, in arena the best way to win is to control the flow of the waves. Mess up your opponent's ult timings and it goes a lot better for you. In single target DPS very often you'll see Salazar just tanking the enemies by himself with a Dolores on him and an Elowin on him and he'll just ult and obliterate them in no time. For Sassane DPS, once again, he is the king. He is at the top. The exact same thing as single target DPS. It is a bit harder to heal him in this. You definitely want to be maintaining healing on him via Elowin. There are also a lot more enemies in this run, so Salazar can't quite kill them all with his ultimate, so he needs more assistance. But in general, as you can see, Salazar is just absolutely ruling in single target and in sustained DPS. He's definitely one of the best arena heroes in the game and arguably could do with a little bit of a nerf. The only remaining piece of content we haven't discussed is Void Rift. I have a number of videos showing you how I cleared the Void Rift and I use Salazar whenever I could justify placing him. He is always my go-to hero. Just the sooner you kill enemies, the easier things get. So I rate him as a very good Void Rift hero as well. That pretty much covers how I would use Salazar and where I recommend using him. So just quickly to go over some tips and tricks. Most of them are focused on his ultimate slashing blitz. It does specify for the duration he is immune to all damage. The duration is two seconds. This allows you to knowingly dodge damage for two second windows. You can use this in guild boss to skip the boss's you know, flame breath. You can ult just as the flame breath lands and he'll be able to survive and get some more damage out after the shield is gone. You can use this in so many places to just dodge fatal damage. It's actually ridiculous how good this is. He is not actually there so enemies will roll past his tile and gear raid too so you have to be mindful of that. Another tip is when you're placing Salazar in some of the campaign stages, consider where his ultimate can reach and where it can bounce. There are often stages where there are platforms or a wall between Salazar and another wave, but his ultimate will reach across that wall. And you can use that to ladder on and kill a whole bunch of enemies further away from Salazar. And I find that to be one of his best uses, just taking advantage of the range of his ultimate, even though it's only one tile more than his normal attack range. It can allow him to get into other lanes and to help other lanes where he normally isn't defending. I do this in Gear Raid 2 sometimes to get him to leap over to the right lane or the left lane, depending on where he is, and help out massively there. So yeah, just a couple of small tips there, but I do think his ultimate is the main thing to play around. The rest of his kit, of course, being very basic and very passive, but his ultimate does have some interesting utility. Anyway, that about covers it for Salazar. Definitely one of the best heroes in the game. Definitely somewhat broken but an incredible hero to use and I definitely suggest using him as much as you can wherever you can. Anyway, that about covers it for this video. Thank you guys very much for watching. Have a lovely day. Take care and bye-bye.